Hi, Matt McAleer. March 15th, 4.15, just after the close. Nice week in the equity markets. A few more weeks like this and December will be a distant memory. It's funny how emotionally, in a short period of time, you can have such peaks and valleys. In December, we were, we were flirting with uh, 2,200, 2,300 on the S&P. Today, we're up through 2,800 in a sh relatively short period of time. Those straight down, straight up markets are some of the trickiest markets to trade. It's much easier to be able to trade a, a series of higher lows or, or from the opposite side sell a breakdown where we're seeing lower highs. Those, those straight up and straight down markets can be tricky. We did take advantage of the strength yesterday and today to lighten up on our Dow Jones 30, our diamonds, DIA, in the U.S portfolio. That brings our cash up to the, about the 20% level. What we'd like to do with that is get a little heavier in tech, but we're in that conundrum where tech has run so well that we prefer to see a little bit of a pullback. Whether we do or not remains to be seen. The market rarely gives you exactly what you want. Thus, the saying comes trade the market that you see, not the market that you want. Now that tech strength, while it's, while it's left us a little behind in the U.S. portfolio, has been very beneficial in the tactical portfolio. It's the highest weighting through 30% in our U.S., in our uh, tactical trend portfolio. So that's been a nice benefit. When you add in some of the strength we've seen in biotech, we've had a, a nice run strategy-wise. Over an international, no trades this week, but some positives. Developed markets have continued on that bid that we started to see seven, eight weeks ago. Emerging markets, which were weak last week and two weeks ago, got a bid Thursday, Friday. So it would be nice to see if this little pullback in emerging markets gets hit with continued demand. Uh, one of the things we always keep our eye on is how can the U.S. continue to move higher without help from the international markets? It's a tricky situation. Well, the U.S. is getting that help right now. Allocation to equities tends to pick up when the global markets are strong. We know we saw a big cashiering out of equities in December and January. January was a record uh, exit in ETF, equity ETFs. Some of that money is moving back in. That, that fear of missing is starting to take control. We'll see how strong that is. Uh, we want to stay reasonable on both sides. We'll look for uh, good entries from a risk-reward standpoint. We're certainly being helped by bonds. At a 259 on the 10-year, it's a very nice atmosphere for stocks. Uh, you know, at a 210, 215 S&P 500 dividend yield, uh, to, to go out 10 years on a treasury at 259, you know, makes that dividend yield look attractive equity-wise. We'll continue to watch rates very closely in Europe, where Germany stayed under 10 basis points this week, Japan, and uh, more and more in South America, as you've had some, some political headlines starting to make, uh, make the papers daily. So everyone have a great weekend. We'll touch base next week. Enjoy the sunshine if you're in Florida. Hi, Matt McAleer. Wanted to invite all of our clients and friends that may be in the greater Southwest Florida area to our Financial Literacy Day, April 11th, at the University of South Florida, Sarasota, Manatee. It's a great conference where we cover equity trading ideas, allocation ideas, fixed income ideas, broad market, both domestic and international ideas, lots of uh, Q&A, with the audience, and this year our keynote speaker is Gretchen Morganson. Everybody knows Gretchen from the Wall Street Journal. We hope that you can carve out some time, April 11th, to join us. Be a fun day.